Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever we might find you in the world. Uh, I'm Carl, a senior solution engineer at Milestone Systems. Uh, today, we're going to be continuing our PowerShell series and looking at some of the basic building blocks uh, for our first scripts. Um, we do have some in-depth, much more technical sessions that were put on at MIPS. Uh, they're still available to MIPS on demand, as well as uh, Josh Hendricks has an entire series of wonderful videos that go super in-depth. Um, but we're actually going to take a step back and go a little bit more basic with our uh, with our webinar today. So let's pop over to our demo tab and start looking at this. Let's hide a window and make our screen a little bit bigger so it's actually readable for us. All right, as you can see, this script is very basic. There's not a lot going on with here. We only have 10 lines. Let's take a quick glance real quick and kind of get an idea of what's going on. Then we'll start playing with the script. Um, it looks like we're starting to doing something with some recording servers and then Looks like we're going down and touching the hardware and finally down and touching the cameras. And it looks like it loops up whole things about 10 lines, nothing too overly crazy. Let's run this script real quick, just from the command line. Uh, and down here in my, this is a terminal window. So you can see the code in the terminal at the same time. Let's run this little demo script and see what happens. Oh, that wasn't exciting. We got an error right off the bat. Um, I always like to show errors because I say that I've learned much more from my errors over the years than I have from uh, doing everything right and getting lucky. So let's take a look at this error and dissect it for a minute. Uh, the first line right here, get recording server, connection to management server is not available. Connect first with connect management server. That, that sounds pretty gu guilty. If you didn't guess, that's, that's kind of a reason for our error. Let's connect to the management server. And then I am on a different uh, domain than my machine. So we are also going to get our credentials and type those in. All right, we'll give it a second to connect. And maybe if I can type the right password, that'll help too. And give it one more second. And there we go. If you notice this time, we, we didn't get an error. Um, so in PowerShell, you'll find that if your command is successful, you don't get a notification that it worked. There's no happy little checkbox that comes up. It just goes to the next line. So let's go look at that error message again we had with our recording server, see if there's anything else in there was kind of interesting for us. Um, you'll see that it was getting to the errors we we're trying to connect to the recording server. Uh, let's go through and just try and run that command to see if we get something now. Oh, hey, when we run the command this time, you notice that we actually return back to some command. We didn't get an error. That's great. Let's try running the script one more time to see if we fixed our error. Oh, looks like we ended up with two errors that time. One step forward, two steps back. So we made progress, but we don't see entirely what's going on. Let's look at this error more to see if it kind of can give us an idea of what's going on. So you'll see that we have a uh, git camera. Ooh, the git camera command is not recognized name of a command like function or script. Well, it looks like we spelled that wrong somewhere in our script. Uh, our script's only 10 lines, so that's pretty easy to go through and debug. But what if this was a several hundred lines long or a longer script? Um, as we look at the error message, you'll see at, at here, and it has the full path to the script I'm working on with a colon and a number at the end. This six is actually saying that our line, our error is on line six. So let's go look at line six. I'm guessing this probably should be camera. I mean, you'd think if I, what I do for a living, I'd be able to call cameras pretty embarrassing. Let's, let's save that and go through and try and run the script one more time, see if we got everything working on it. Oh, there was no error this time. That, that's always a, a good push for us, but we didn't have any output. Let's go take a look at the script more and see exactly what's going on. So at the front of some of these lines, you'll see they're colored green to kind of let us know what's going on. Uh, they have this pound or octothorpe or hash at the front. This denotes this line is a comment. So this is just notes to ourselves what's going on. So if we go to the script, we're gonna say for each, looks like recording server. So if we have more than one recording server, we're gonna run through this loop of code. And the first thing it's doing is just a comment. There's nothing in that line to look at. The same thing as we loop through the hardware and finally to the cameras. You know, let's uncomment line number three and run the script again to see what it looks like we have some output on it. Oh, hey, that output looks shockingly similar to our git recording server command. Um, as you can see, every time it loops through, it adds every recording server to this variable of rec. 
And now I'm just printing out this variable to rec as it loops through. We only have one recording server, so only one recording server is showing up. You know, let's comment out line three and let's look at the hardware. Let's run this script one more time, see if we get an error. Oh, we didn't. It looks like it's still working for us. Let's take a peek and see what we have going on with this hardware. See, it looks like we have a couple microphones, some other stuff going on. Hey, this one's just named me. Uh, as a spoiler, this is actually a, uh, an Arcules camera. So it looks like I have an Arcules camera on my system. And then there also is an interconnected system. A little bit down here, you'll see the driver for it, where it's connected to another server. So it looks like we have one recording server and two pieces of hardware. Let's go one deeper and look at the actual cameras underneath it. Oh, now we're starting to get some information that actually looks helpful for us. Uh, let's say we're trying to pull some information out of the system that we're going to include with some ONN for closeout documents. So as we kind of go through and look at the cameras here, you'll see we have lots of information and it's kind of difficult to read. Let me resize this window a little bit so we can see what's kind of going on. And we have lots of information, the pre-buffer and recording timeout, and I mean, even our recording frame rate, all kinds of cool stuff. It's not exactly the most user-friendly to try and read though. Um, so let's just try and find all of the cameras on this system first. So let's go through and we'll see that name. Name looks like a pretty cool property that has something that designates what's going on. Uh, inside of PowerShell, instead of referring to the entire variable itself, uh, we can go down just and look at a single property. So if we have camera.name, now we're only looking for this name variable as opposed to all of the objects. Let's run it one more time and see what's happening. There we go this becomes something that's actually becoming useful for us. We actually can see all the cameras in the system uh, and their name from it. Uh, that, that actually becomes pretty useful for us. All right, uh, moving on next, let's try and extend this a little bit to another script. This is a script that looks shockingly similar to the demo we've had. We still have our same loops going through all of our recording servers, then going through the hardware, and then going through camera. I spelled it right this time, going through camera, but we can get all those things. Uh, you'll notice we have one more piece of information here at the top. It looks like we're initializing a variable of hardware info. Uh, that looks to be an array. Uh, PowerShell's kind of nice in telling us what's going on. And then as we kind of look through the rest of the script, we're saying for every recording server, check the hardware on it, and then look at each camera. As we get to the camera, we're initializing a new variable here, row. Uh, and just as a guess, if we're trying to build a report from it, maybe this is going to be a row in the report. So let's just keep looking at it. So this row, we're going to pipe it to our add member, and we're adding some notes to it. it. Looks like we're adding a name, and there's a variable. Hey, that looks familiar from the last group we were playing with, uh, that dollar sign camera dot name. So I bet the same thing probably applies to the hardware. Even though the hardware is one loop up, it's still current for the machine, for the loop that we're on. So hey, let's pull the hardware address out of it. And then let's show that we also can get up to the recording server itself and pull up the time zone. And so it looks like we're taking all of those rows and then we're adding them into that hardware info. Let's go down one more line and then it looks like it just displays a hardware info to us. So it's not doing a whole lot, but let's run that real quick and see what happens. Now we're getting some great information out of the system. Uh, so now we have the camera name and the address and even the times on the server it's on. That, that's becoming pretty powerful for us. Let's say you wanted to convert this into a quick report that you wanted to be able to include with your O&M docs or close out in a project, let your customer know exactly everything that's happened in their system. And we want to add the frame rate to that camera. Let's look at modifying the script to add a frame rate. So let's start with something we already know works. So we know this line works and we know everything's spelled correctly. So let's just copy and paste it. So we'll have to change a couple things in this line uh, to make it be useful for us. So let's change the name to FPS. So we actually need the frames per second. And well, now we need to find where that was in the variable. So let's pull our window up and find those camera properties again as we went through and looked at every point on it. This recording frame rate, that seems pretty guilty. That looks like the variable that probably has the information I'm looking for. So let's go back to our script. Instead of camera.name, let's do camera.recording frame rate. Save that and run that report one more time. I like it when things work the first time for us. So now you can see that we have the camera name. You see that we have the camera name as well as the frames per second that's coming out of it, the address for the camera, and the time zone is on the recording server. 
So this is some pretty great information. I mean, from here, what do we do with it? I mean, you can't really just send your customer a script and say, hey, run the script in order to show what's going on. And it's not really going to try and just take a screenshot. I mean, we could try and copy and paste, but that doesn't come out super elegant for us. Let's look down in the script. Maybe I was helpful beforehand and gave us a hint. So if you look at lines 18 and 19, let's dissect those real quick and then add them into the script. So let's not comment the first one. The first one, we're initializing a variable of our CSV file path, and it looks like we're just aiming towards our current directory and naming the file camera settings.csv. Let's look at the second line then. So the second line, uh, we're taking that hardware info, which again was this information down here, and we're piping that to the export CSV command. Uh, as you're probably assuming, this export to CSV command is going to take this uh, information we displayed in the screen here and put it out into a file. It's going to save it at the CSV file path that we have there. Let's save this and run the script one more time to see what happens. Well, it looked exactly the same. Well, if you look, we didn't have anything else displaying. The only thing we have displaying is this one variable here. But if we take a look and do a directory listing, you'll see we have a new file of camera settings that are created. Let's use cat to take a peek in that file and see what's in there. And here you can see we have our heading on it, so a name, FPS, address, and time zone. And they're all separated by commas. Looks like the export CSV was nice enough to do it for that. And all the other information is also encased inside of those quotes, making this a CSV file that we could open inside of Excel, forward on to the customer, um, or make other changes. Um, and then, as you saw in here, it's really easy to add the, the other information we need into it. It's very simple to go back and find other settings we need from the cameras itself. Uh, maybe we need to know how long the manual timeout was, or we want to know the, the display name versus the full name, or we want to know for recording only uh, keyframes. So a lot of this, so PowerShell becomes a very powerful tool um, that you can really grow a lot with. Um, this is new for a lot of people, so we're always here to help Azure SV team. Um, and we've really just scratched the surface of what can be done with PowerShell. Uh, this little 15 minute presentation doesn't go into enough depth to really give you, make you more than dangerous from it. Uh, but if you're interested in learning more about PowerShell or need assistance with getting a script you're working on, uh, please reach out to your local solution engineer. Uh, we're happy to give you a hand. And if you're not currently working with a solution engineer, please reach out to your channel business manager. Um, the CBM's not gonna be able to help you technically, but they can get you to the right resources internal that can give you a hand. The SE crew is always happy to help. Thank you for joining.